Hello there, I'm Javis Lewis, and today I'm going to show you how you can populate an NS table view from code. Let's check it out. I had previously shown you how to populate an NS table view using bindings in an array controller and today I'm going to show you how to do that in code. It's relatively simple and it's very similar to populating your UI table view in iOS but there are a couple of differences and I thought it's best to show you this rather than explain it all with screenshots and all that. So let's do this thing. I've created a demo project already which is on GitHub. I'll show you the link later but for now I'm going to create a brand new one here. Coca application and we're going to call it table demo perhaps. Righty, so I'm going to refer to my code here from this article so I'm going to copy and paste some of these things in only because I've already written them out but the principles remain the same. So first we're going to drag our NS table view into the nib file and then we're going to create a custom controller class and hook it up properly. Let's do that first. Go to your main menu zip file here and click that window button here. This brings that thing up. In our box down here, let's find a table view. There we go. Just type in table, search for table, and this thing will come up. And you drag that in. This is going to be a big thing, and it doesn't just come with the table view like it does in iOS. It comes with several other things. And also, this is only available as a classic NS table view. It doesn't come as an NS table view controller variation like we know this from iOS. So that's a major difference here. You've got to create your own controller class. I'm going to make this a bit smaller. Make the table view a bit smaller. Like so. That should do. And I'm going to make the window a bit smaller as well. And look, before we even started, Xcode gives us a warning here that the view is misplaced. This happens when you have auto layout enabled in your project. I genuinely don't like auto layout. It's just more trouble than it's worth. So we could either switch this off to suppress that warning, or another option is to click this little yellow thing here, which will tell us that's basically what's wrong with it. Technically, there isn't anything wrong with it, but it's one of those things. And you click that yellow knob again, and then you have a few options here. Update frame, update constraints, or reset to suggested constraints. And apply this to all views in the container. Let's do that. No more warning. Excellent. Let's get on with it. So that's just the table view. Uh, if you click on this, back to structure here, you'll see that this is the bordered scroll view in which the table view is embedded. They're also embedding this, if you click on this again, into a clip view. And inside that clip view, you'll find the actual table view, which has two columns, this one and that one. And each column has a text field. So it's a much more complicated setup than a UI table view, which is literally just the table view, which is embedded in a, a UI table view controller. So very different here. We're not going to subclass this thing. The only thing we do need to do is so that we can reference these columns here individually is we need to click on the column. You can do that either by clicking on the, on the first selected bordered scroll view about four times or you can go and select the table column directly from here. We need to do that because they need to be identified. So up here in the identity inspector where you can see the custom class, you can also see the identity. So let's call this one numbers. And then the second one, we're going to call it number values just because this is going to be the numbers 1 to 10 and this is going to be the written out versions of 1 to 10. Okay, that's that. We're also going to need a custom table controller class or table view controller class. Let's create one. Command N to open a new file under here Coco OS X Coco Objective C class and call it table controller. Okay. 
and that's just going to be an empty class for now. In the header file, let us make sure we are conforming to the NS table view data source for now. And we're also going to declare a couple of properties here. So two arrays, one will hold the numbers 1 to 10, and the second one is going to hold the written out values of 1 to 10. Go back into the implementation file. And I'm going to go back to my article here, the how to populate an NS table view in code, because that is exactly the code I'm going to use. These are just two custom initializers that will create our number values. I'm sure you didn't want to watch me write those out. Oh, actually, I'm going to call, I've called this number code, so that's cool. We're just going to call that number codes here. And no more error. Perfect. So they're both 10 items long. Just make sure they match up. Okay, on the bottom here, we're going to implement that data source. So I always like putting a pragma mark at the beginning of a block that contains code that kind of matches up or sticks together. Helps me on a larger project identify what I did where. Table view data source. So these two methods, they will come up if you just type table view and you've got this long list of anything that starts with table view. The first one we need is the number of rows in table view. Maybe sometimes difficult to find because it doesn't start with table view, that's why. And it's just a number of rows in table view. And all we need to do is return either the number 10, or a much better way, if I were to amend this array with other numbers and other values, is to return my numbers arrays count. So then if I add the numbers 11 to 20 here, this is going to be updated automatically. The next method is going to return the actual data that we're going to display in that row. You must be careful that two methods here, one is called one is this one, is set object value for table column in row. That's not really what we want because NS table views, they come in two different flavors. They come in cell based flavors and in view based flavors. I, from what I understand, the cell based flavors were the relatively simple, older type ones that, are, that were based on, on cells, whereas the newer ones are based on views. And views are much more powerful because you can add your own images and you can add, instead of one text field, you could add 12 text fields and all kinds of buttons. So I suppose that's the new way of doing it or the 2014 way of doing it. And this one here, set object value, that's not the method we want. That's the one you'd use for cell-based table views. And we want the one for view-based table views, which almost sounds the same. So let's try that one. And it's object value for table column. That's the one we want. And this method gets called every time a new row is drawn, much like in the UI table view. But in this case, it will also identify the column. If you don't specify anything, each column will be drawn with the same content. So if we'd say this return self numbers object index row. If we were to run this now, then we'd get the same in every column. In fact, we're not getting anything because we haven't hooked it up yet. So let's, let's before we identify the columns here, let's go back to the nib file and hook this thing up. In order so that we can drag from the table view to our controller, we need a controller object right here. And we do that by looking in a massive list of objects for NS object. And we'll find that blue box here. That's just a generic NS object. So we take that, we drag that under objects. And with it selected, we go over here in the identity inspector, go and give it a custom class. For example, the one that we've just written, which is the table controller. And now that we have that, we can go back and select our table view, this one here, and control drag 
from it or from here, up to you, and drag to the table controller object. And then we let go, and then we have data source and delegate. We'll deal with delegate in a moment. Now it's just going to be data source. And now if we run this, we should at least get a result. And we do. Both columns with the same value. But because we've already identified the first column having the identifier of numbers, we can now go and check that in our method that calls this. So we'll say if table column identifier is equal to numbers, then we'll return the numbers. If that's not the case, we'll return our other array, which is self number codes. Oh, that's why. My Xcode got confused because I forgot that bracket here. Sorry, Xcode. Right, let's try this again. Return self number codes object at index row. There we go. And this will now say, if our column identifier is numbers, use this array. And if it's not, then use that array. Let's try. Yes, much better. Exactly what we want. So that's how the table view gets powered in code. The only thing that we can currently not do, or we can do, but we can't really tell when someone's clicking on a row. And that is has nothing to do with the data source. It has to do with the... NS table view delegate. So back into our header file, we can go and not only conform to the data source protocol, we're also going to con conform to the NS table view delegate protocol. And both before we implement that method, let's go back into our nib file, exit file, select our table view, and again, control drag from that table view to our table controller and hook up the delegate. Otherwise, that's not going to be called. And the delegate method that we want to react to is table view selection did change. Selection did change. There we go. And that's very similar to the did select row at index path method in iOS, but we don't have that kind of method. So our house is called table view selection did change. We also don't have an index path and we're not being provided with a direct object here, a direct table view object. Uh, instead, we're only getting a notification. That's, you know, not a massive problem because notifications, they have three values that we're interested in, which is a name, which is in this case, it'll be the NS table view selection did change notification awesome names these are. And uh, another one is the actual object that sent the notification. So we can just grab that table view reference that, that sent that by using this, as table view notification object. Then we'll have a reference to our table view. And the table view will tell us which row is currently selected. So we can then print that out or react to it in any other way. So I'm just going to write a log message that tells us which row has been selected there. Percent at is probably not correct, but Xcode will correct me there in a second. And then we go table view selected row. And as soon as we do that, Xcode goes, well, this is a string literal object here, and really we're being passed an NSU integer, and that should be something else, which I can never remember, which is percent %LD. Perfect. Let's run that. Here we go. Let's select something, and there's our log message, which is currently off by one, so I'm currently selecting the last row, which tells me it's 10, but really it says selected row is nine because this array that the table is based on is, starts at zero and our values start at one.
All right, that was it. I hope this was helpful. Uh, as I said, I've got a fully working demo project on GitHub here, which is called Mac Table View Code, and it's at github.com forward slash verse Lewis, and just look for Table View Code, and then you'll find that. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and share this video with random pets and strangers and whatever else you can find. Thanks for watching. Bye.